Hey guys, Mike here again. I was asked to do a video on my coolant filter here. So I guess I'll get started. Um, this is, if you don't already know, my 1991 uh, 7380i in my 85 F250 chassis. And um, with the 7380i's, they had a problem that was... Uh, called cylinder cavitation and basically what happens with these is little if I understand correctly little vacuum pockets form on the liner the engine block liner and the vibrations cause these liners to or I mean the vacuum pockets to burst and take chunks out of the liner over time and eventually supposedly this can cause engine block failure now this has been uh, talked about I mean it has happened it's not a frequent issue but just to be on the safe side I decided to run a coolant additive and a coolant filter um, the coolant additive it's an SCA additive I forgot right off the top of my head what that stands for but Basically, I run a standard green coolant with a Motocrav coolant additive. I believe the part number is VC8. I got that from O'Reilly's. But um, the coolant additive is to help prevent the buildup of those vapor pockets. But the, on the other hand of that, um, too much of the coolant additive and it can become a abrasive in your cooling system so on a couple of the forums I was reading that if you actually put too much or you run it a little high it's a good idea to have a coolant filter and another reason it's a good idea to have a coolant filter is just over time the we the breakdown of your cooling system components there's little debris that accumulate into the cooling system that you want to filter out now here's my setup I I built this little bracket for it, so that a little aluminum bracket there out of some uh, spare drops I got from work. But um, if you buy it at the parts store, I got this from a fleet supply store. You pretty much get this filter head and the filter itself, and you can actually even buy the filters uh, with the coolant additive released in the filter. I chose to get a base filter, just a Baldwin filter, with the coolant, uh, a, a, with me adding the coolant additive separately. But anyway, how I got this plumbed, I got it plumbed on the return from my heater core because, uh, frankly, because of convenience. And then more recently, because I installed this coolant temp sensor right on the feed to my heater core. So I got the uh, the coolant temp sensor here on the feed to my heater core line and then on my return. I originally had this dr all dr going straight through the coolant filter. But in winter time my truck was not uh, getting warm because it had too much restriction. So I turned it into a bypass filter. Which basically means that it doesn't all primarily circulate through this. But over time uh, all the coolant should circulate through the filter. And I don't have too much restriction so I still have heat in my truck um, but I just use some brass tees and then I teed it off there so I got my I got basically two returns one side going in the filter here and coming back up and the other side just continuing on and going that way um, that's typically how the other setups I've seen installed I could probably improve it, could probably add a restriction valve on one feed so um, more coolant will flow through the filter, but I just haven't taken the time to mess with that. Uh, so if you have a 7.3, I highly recommend at least a, a, a coolant additive or a pre-charged coolant with the coolant additive already pre-mixed in. Um, it's primarily for IDIs, the power strokes, and the other... Newer diesels didn't typically have the problem, but a coolant additive isn't necessarily a bad thing for a new, newer diesel either. 
Uh, on the older 6.9s, they didn't typically have this problem because they had thicker cylinder walls. And I think that's about it. Short and simple. <laughs> have a good one.